myself R. Shagila Devi, Assistant Professor in Rohini College of Engineering and Technology. Today we are going to discuss about the subject Object Oriented Programming. In this Object Oriented Programming subject, in Unit 4, we have the following topics Multi Threading and Multitasking, Synchronization and Inter Thread Communication. All these things we are going to discuss in this lecture. So what is the outcome is, on successful completion of this module, the student should be able to compare the multi-threading and multitasking, and they can explain the thread synchronization concept. We can illustrate the concept of inter-thread communication. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about multi-threading. So what is multitasking? Multitasking is a process that it involves multiple tasks running simultaneously. That is, multiple process run simultaneously means that is what we call it as multitasking. OS implements multitasking by using multiprocessing concept and the Java implements the multitasking by using multithreading concept. What is multiprocessing? A program is a set of instruction. We know that a program is a set of instruction and a process is a running instance of the program. So normally we must know the difference between the program and the process. A program in execution is called as a process. What is a program? A program is a set of instruction. So a CPU is shared between these two devices. So what this is called as multiprocessing. And what is multiprocessing? In multiprocessing, OS implements context switching mechanism. That is the program's entire context include variable, global variables, methods, etc. But it is stored separately. But in multi-threading, the different tasks within a main task execute simultaneously. The multi-threading implements the idea of multitasking by taking its one level lower. So what is multi-threading? The individual program appears to do multiple tasks simultaneously. Each subtask within an application is called as a thread. So why thread is needed? A thread is an entity within a process. So it defines the path of execution. So what is the need is to run multiple tasks simultaneously to make effective use of CPU. We are using this thread concept. So what is the difference between process and a thread? So what is the process? A program in execution is called as a process. So each process has a complete set of its own variables. But in threads, thread live in a single application thus may share the same data. Uh, in process, it takes more overhead to launch a new process, but if it is a thread means it takes much less overhead to create and destroy a thread. And for a process, the inter-process communication is a heavyweight activity, but in a thread, the inter-thread communication is a lightweight activity. So next we are going to discuss how we can implement multi-threading in Java. So multi-threading in Java can be implemented by using either one of the following approaches. One is by extending the thread class and another one is by implementing the runnable interface. Okay, So in two ways you can implement the multi-threading concept in Java. One is by extending the thread class, another one is by implementing runnable interfaces. Okay, So next we are going to discuss about the thread priority. The thread priorities are used in scheduler. So the scheduler schedule the process to the CPU. So threads of equal priority is completely equally for CPU. So we have to give priority to the process. So the scheduler picks up the highest priority thread normally. So how we can set the priority? The priority levels can be set within a range. That is we can set the minimum priority and maximum priority. So you can if you want to set you can prior set it as min underscore priority of 1. That is the minimum priority set as 1 and max underscore priority of 10. That means the maximum priority is set as 10. And if you want to set the default priority means you can represent that as norm underscore priority of 5. That is the normal priority is 5. And next we are going to discuss some of the methods in thread classes. Start, stop, yield, is alive, sleep, suspend, resume, current, thread and join. So what is the startup method? A method that makes a request to the OS for the creation of the thread is called as startup. So it is responsible for transitioning of a thread from a bond state to the ready state. And what is the use of stopper function? It forcefully kills the thread. It, it avoids a normal ending of thread. It 
forcefully kill that th particular thread that is stop a function so it send the thread to the dead state once the thread becomes dead it cannot be started again and what is the use of yield of function as it is a static method that causes currently executing thread to yield the control so if there are other runnable threads whose priority is at least as high as this thread then they will be scheduled next again everything in this depends on the operating system the op all the scheduling concepts priority everything is based on the operating systems concept and is a live function it returns true value if the thread has started and not yet terminated if it is alive that is the thread is started and the process is not yet terminated means the is alive function returns the value true so if a thread is dead means it returns the value false so what is the use of sleeper function as it is a static method that sends a thread into a sleeping state so a thread remains in the sleeping state until the sleep time interval is over so the time interval is specified in terms of milliseconds so we are going to give some milliseconds for a particular milliseconds of time the particular thread is going to the sleeping state and suspend of resume of function so what is the use of suspend of function it send the thread to the suspend state and that is after the process the sleeping is over actually the resume of function resume into the resume back to the ready state so next what is the use of current thread of function this but um, what is the use of this particular method is this method returns the reference of the currently running thread so it gives you the details about that is the reference about the currently running thread okay so how we can use this thread dot current thread of which is equal to t1 that is we are checking whether it's a t1 thread 1 means we are going to do some process and join of function so it waits for the thread to terminate next we are going to do synchronization so what is synchronization many times two or multiple threads need to share access the same object so this needs to ensure that the object will be modified by only one thread at a time so else they will be false in race condition okay so if you are using a shared variable means the shared variables or the shared object must be modified by only one thread at a time otherwise it's create an issue okay so to avoid this we are going for the concept of synchronization so what is the key to synchronization process the key to synchronization process is monitors a monitor is an object that is used as a mutually exclusive lock it acts as a lock so only one thread can own a monitor at a given period of time so when the thread acquires a lock it is said to have the uh, but that is entered into the monitor all the other threads are attempting to enter into the locked monitor will be suspected until the first thread exit from the monitor okay so first it gets the lock means all the other threads should wait they won't get the access after this particular thread completes its work other threads can enter into the monitor so next we are going to discuss about inter thread communication so what is inter thread communication sometimes in an application there is a need of two or multiple threads interacting with each other so it leads to inter thread communication so if an application need to communicate between the threads means we need the concept of inter thread communication example is a communication between through two threads like the producer and consumer problem okay so the, if a producer and the consumer in the same application wants to communicate means that is the example for inter thread communication so to implement the inter thread communication there are three methods we are using one is wait of notify of notify all of so what is the use of wait of function so it must be invoked within a synchronized context so when it is invoked it release the lock and send the currently running thread to the waiting state so it give a chance to other threads to look for a same lock so what is the use of wait of function is it is it must be invoked within the synchronization concept so if, when it is invoked it releases a lock and send the currently running thread to the waiting state that is it move the currently running thread to the waiting state next notify and notify all of function so notify function it wakes up the single thread that that particular thread is in the waiting state so others can use it 
notify all means it wake up all the threads so notify wakes up wake up a single thread but notify all wake up all the threads within the process and we are next we are going to dis discuss about deadlocks so when a thread enter into the waiting state it cannot be unblocked itself so the waiting thread can be brought into ready state when other thread notifies by using either notify or by using notify all of function so if not it is handled properly all the threads may go into the waiting state and there is no one to notify them okay so this will create an deadlock issue thank you